The frost performs its secret ministry unhelped by any wind. The owlet's cry came loud, and hark again, loud as before. The inmates of my cottage, all at rest, have left me to that solitude which suits abstruser musings, save that at my side my cradled infant slumbers peacefully. Tis calm indeed, so calm that it disturbs and vexes meditation with its strange and extreme silentness. Sea, hill, and wood. This populous village, sea, and hill, and wood, with all the numberless goings-on of life, inaudible as dreams. The thin blue flame lies on my low-burnt fire and quivers not. Only that film which fluttered on the grate still flutters there, the sole unquiet thing. Methinks its motion in this hush of nature gives it dim sympathies with me who live, making it a companionable form, whose puny flaps and freaks the idling spirit by its own moods interprets everywhere echo or mirror seeking of itself, and makes a toy of thought. But oh, how oft, how oft at school with most believing mind, presageful have I gazed upon the bars, to watch that fluttering stranger, and as oft with unclosed lids already had I dreamt of my sweet birthplace and the old church tower, whose bells, the poor man's only music, rang from morn to evening all the hot fair day, so sweetly that they stirred and haunted me with a wild pleasure, falling on mine ear, most like articulate sounds of things to come. So gazed I, till the soothing things I dreamt lulled me to sleep, and sleep prolonged my dreams. And so I brooded all the following morn, awed by the stern preceptor's face, mine eye fixed with mock study on my swimming book, save if the door half opened, and I snatched a hasty glance, and still my heart leaped up, for still I hoped to see the stranger's face, townsman, or aunt, or sister, more beloved, my playmate, when we both were clothed alike. Dear babe, that sleepest cradled by my side, whose gentle breathings heard in this deep calm fill up the interspersed vacancies and momentary pauses of the thought, my babe so beautiful. It thrills my heart with tender gladness thus to look at thee and think that thou shalt learn far other lore and in far other scenes. For I was reared in the great city, pent mid cloisters dim, and saw naught lovely but the sky and stars. But thou, my babe, shalt wander like a breeze by lakes and sandy shores, beneath the crags of ancient mountains, and beneath the clouds which image in their bulk both lakes and shores and mountain crags. So shalt thou see and hear the lovely shapes and sounds intelligible of that eternal language, which thy God utters who from eternity doth teach himself in all, and all things in himself. Great universal teacher, he shall mould thy spirit, and by giving make it ask. Therefore all seasons shall be sweet to thee, whether the summer clothe the general earth with greenness, or the red breast sit and sing betwixt the tufts of snow on the bare branch of mossy apple tree, while the nigh thatch smokes in the sun thaw, whether the eavedrops fall heard only in the trances of the blast, or if the secret ministry of frost shall hang them up in silent icicles, quietly shining to the quiet moon.